So my wife and I are here uh, back on Bainbridge Island and um, we had intended to go to the courthouse. Um, uh, as some of you know, there is a court proceeding that's starting in about an hour. And uh, it's a protection order um, hearing that is challenging another neighbor's free speech rights. It's a bit complicated. Um, we were going to go there and show our support for the free speech rights of a neighbor that we disagree with, or at least I disagree with on uh, many things. Um, but we chose, instead of doing that, we thought maybe it was a bit dangerous to do so. And um, so we chose to come here to the Bainbridge Island Japanese American Exclusion Memorial, since this is a very important part of our island. It was done in uh, 1982, I believe, where they took a look at the internment of Japanese Americans and tried to come up with you know, some of the causes, like how did our country get to a point where not only one or two individuals thought it was okay, but an entire nation thought it was okay to use the force of government to place our neighbors without any charge or trial, without any actual evidence of a crime, place them behind barbed wire. And this, this panel found that it was racial prejudice, um, wartime hysteria, and uh, weak political leadership as the three main causal factors for that. Now, I think that as Islanders, we should you know, consider what can this memorial tell us honestly about where we're at today. And you know, weak political leadership, that's a difficult one for us to affect. Um, today we'll be voting. Um, and you know, that gives us some voice, but it's hard to really control our political leadership. But the wartime hysteria portion, that part, I think we can control. And I think it's extremely important um, that we do so. So hysteria is, it's a, a, it's the height of irrationality. It's a fear-based frenzy that takes over us and it makes it so that we don't use our God-given brains. We can't use the, the one thing that separates us, or at least highlights us in the animal kingdom. Our ability to reason, to think, to deduce, to use evidence, right? To not be ruled by emotion, to not be ruled by these instincts. But hysteria hijacks that, it subverts that, and it uses fear, the most primal base instincts that we have, and it rules us. And then it uses the mob, and it, it, it takes and expounds upon it, and it compounds it, and it makes it even bigger. Until we, we as people do the worst things we are capable of doing to one another. Um, that was true in the 1940s when we locked up 70,000 American citizens without charge or trial. And that's just the citizens, not including the legal immigrants who had lived here and were Americans as well and were also protected by the Constitution. But taking all of that argument aside, these were people who were American citizens. They had constitutional rights and nobody can deny that. And yet the entire nation said we are going to take you and we are going to put you behind barbed wire without any charge, without any trial. And if you try to leave, we will kill you. All right. We did that because of hysteria. And it's important for us not to just treat that lesson as though it's a political pawn or uh, uh, a prop, but rather to understand what actually happened and, and how is it happening today and how can we prevent it from happening? Now, it seems to me that our nation is undeniably, if not ruled by hysteria, getting dangerously close. Uh, political factions, um, the, the caricaturing of people, the, um, the accusations without evidence. So in the 1940s, Japanese Americans, our neighbors, were suspected without evidence of being saboteurs, of secretly communicating with our enemy, of sneakily doing all of these things.
to undermine our safety. And it was because of our safety that we had to violate their rights. That, that same process is happening today. We're seeing it all over the place. And we're seeing it on our island. These were people who lived on this island, who worked on this island, who farmed, made this community better. Americans with American rights, protected by the Constitution, just like everybody else. And yet, in the blink of an eye, it was just as if 1776 had never happened. It just did not matter. Just like that. So quick. And it was because of hysteria. It's because of rationalization. And it's because people didn't actually appreciate the rights of people that they didn't necessarily like or agree with. Right? There was racial prejudice. Absolutely there was racial prejudice. And there were many people who didn't care. You know, because their racism um, was stronger uh, than their valuing of people's freedom, of their rights. And it's very important for us. Now, I certainly don't condone racism, but whatever the reason, even legitimate reasons for not liking our neighbors, it's very important. It's vital that we never allow our prejudices, our biases um, to strip our neighbors of their rights. It's vital that we rush to the protection of our neighbors that we don't like when we see their rights being violated. Because if we do not, then we we don't have constitutional protections. You know, um, I think it was uh, Fred Korematsu who, who talked about the Constitution and mentioned that unless the people actually value those constitutional protections, in his words, it's merely a scrap of paper. As Islanders, it should be felt as a responsibility for us to really think about what happened in the 1940s and to really make good on the motto, let it not happen again.